from Somaliland and I came as a young refugee when I was 18 years old. I always wanted to have an impact back home or to do something where it could be useful. We are the only company in the U.S. distilling frankincense. I, I had that inside me to have my own business first. But I ended up making it. No one has attacked the frankincense market because they don't have the source. The same family um, tree that has held the frankincense uh, region uh, is still all connected. So you can't marry into the frankincense um, industry. It's held by all the males in the family. Uh, Mahdi has put his entire family's honor on the line to say that I'm going to work tirelessly for sustainable frankincense. One of the greatest advantages we have as a company is we have a Somali running this. Somalians have their own, you know, they embrace themselves to be a, a country, a, to be a people. They, you know, they, they create their own sovereignty, their, their peace. Culturally, it's curious, cautious, welcoming, and um, tight-knit. It doesn't just let its walls down or let its guard down for any idea that's not um, well laid out, well vetted. It's all the makings for a great business relationship. Um, there's no market regulation, there's no government support. Uh, it's a, uh, a unique situation in that sense. You cannot go there, I don't care who you are, if you're not from Somalia, you cannot go there and get as far as he has in terms of understanding the culture, talking to the harvesters, talking to the harvesters is huge. You know, our ties grow deeper and deeper in the Somali land, the more resin that we buy. If you need it from a certain tree and you can figure out that it's coming more from the bark than the resin, or if it's coming from an older tree than a younger tree, I mean, I can do that for you is what our company can do. We're the only frankincense company that knows exactly where and what tree that that, what region that frankincense is coming from. We directly source an oleo gum resin. Unlike other supply chains for these resins, there aren't so many fingers into the pie. The resin is harvested on foot. It's carried out of the mountains. It goes from there to by truck to the port of export in Somaliland. And it goes into a shipping container and comes into the port of Montreal. From the port of Montreal, it goes by truck to our facility here. I built a bridge, Somaliland to Vermont. You know, we came so far to make our own distiller learn ourselves because we couldn't find anybody who could tell us. That was kind of cool that we both got to experience the distillation, him being a Somalian doing it for the first time of, you know, learning it together. So we do the Furiana oil, the Carteri oil, those are two frankincense, the Mir oil, and then we do the frankincense hydrosol. It has this quality of uplifting our mood and, and our energy. The properties are known to be calming, centering, anti-anxiety, antimicrobial, um, antiseptic. One very solid, important and very grounded uh, market that frankincense has at the moment is from the essential oil used for the perfume industry and the cosmetic industry, especially I would say uh, niche industries that praise themselves for using uh, raw materials as opposed to synthetics, of course. And so uh, that's a high quality uh, kind of customer uh, that we are very happy to, to serve. There's literally been studies on um, frankincense, it's a skin uh, cell regenerator. The hydrosol itself, it actually reduces um, the appearance of lines, wrinkles, it tightens your skin and it helps um, with acne. It's like every woman's dream, really. <laughs> you could put um, straight mirror essential oil on a weeping wound especially, and it will dry it up and heal it. Mirror is used today um, as an ingredient in toothpastes. It's really good for your gums. But like some people in the uh, industry, they um, will say, your mirror is delicious. Buzz Wellness has the first ever USDA certified organic frankincense and what that's allowed the company to do is to carve out a market niche that says our frankincense is real. It's not synthetic, it hasn't been created in a laboratory. An antimicrobial uh, soap 
uh, contains one compound to kill germs. In comparison to that, these resins contain hundreds of compounds that have all a purpose and it's a whole militia of compounds that really defend the tree and the plant from attacks. The trees make these resins for a reason and they do that uh, essentially to heal themselves. And a lot of these compounds have a value to human bodies as well. There's trials to um, establish frankincense's ability to kill cancer cells um, and also for anti-inflammatory properties for arthritis. Those two modern applications of frankincense completely change the market. We can imagine this region of the Horn of Africa as really a medicinal bank. People are slowly finding out the medicinal benefits of frankincense oil and also the powder, which is the boswellic acid. People are putting them in soaps and using the soaps and the other ones you're eating them as pills. So I mean those two markets right now are about to explode. And we wanted responsible buyers to help us to, to protect the trees. The sale of frankincense has been a business commodity for centuries um, and it should remain so. We are trying to look where we're getting our raw material. It's been around and it's never been properly managed. It's not a tree that it can be grown in a, in a farm setting. Um, like 80% of uh, essentially the, the medicinal plants that are used today. The, the transplant rate is like 2% and then it can't be tapped for 30 years. That's why the market is so small. And at the end of the year, all the frankincense is gone. But the reason why those trees in Somaliland have lasted and are there plentiful is because they've always tapped them the way their ancestors have. And uh, that raises a whole set of questions on how the harvesting is done and, and especially what kind of relationships we establish uh, with the local communities. So these really truly are the definition of a limited resource and with that comes a responsibility to ensure that we're stewards of that resource so that we can all benefit. The market value of the trees needs to be increased in order to be able to save them. And so it's a new idea of, of protection of our resources. It's coming from recognizing a production region, similar to the DOC regions, for example, in France or in Italy. My dad had a car accident in Somaliland and he died, I went to his funeral and when I came back I just started dreaming about frankincense. Smoke, his head in the middle of the smoke and I always wanted to start something, some business to do with Somaliland. Life I had in Africa made me who I am today. And thanks to my mom who always put me in the store after school. We started about nine years ago uh, just with the idea that we were going to sell some frankincense resin uh, to burn as incense and then realized the potential for essential oil. Right now it's the, it's the oil side um, that I'm mainly focused in. I easily, if we had investment, could, could satisfy the pharmaceutical side. The companies that I have contacted said yes, if you could supply us, we'd buy it from you. Right now we're getting it from India. So I don't think anyone here in the U.S. produces it. I'm the one of the first, I think, who ever exported a product from Somaliland to the U.S. So the immediate impact of our business goals is to purchase more resin at the Somaliland Frankincense and Myrrh Collective fair trade value. We only deal with six harvesters, but there's thousands of them. That the people there harvesting the trees either need another job or we need to make the frankincense industry grow. They're just waiting for me to bring more customers so I could purchase more raw material from them. Somaliland is absolutely opening its doors to investment. You know the product is from Somaliland and we distill here and I, I want to open a distillery in Africa which is in Somaliland to supply the African market. We could lower our price if we had two more distillers. All of our manufacturing currently takes place in Vermont. The primary deterrent from having Somaliland do the distillation is the water scarcity. There's not much water, especially in the harvest region. Having said that, our model has been from day one to eventually open 
a distillery in Somaliland and to make sure that the harvesting community has the opportunity to directly provide these goods. The people of Africa need it. That essential oils for their own health, for their own you know, medicine, and there's a big demand. What's better than uh, helping the poor man and curing the sick? Uh, I think uh, any investors, if he could be doing those two, it should be a gold mine. If the consumer demand is huge, then we need investors to get to catch the, the consumer need. We was in a steady, steady bottom and we just <laughs> certainly went up and well, because we got a great customer called Lush. Ultimately, what I would love is to have more companies like Lush uh, coming in and, and doing business with us uh, because, you know, if, if their mission is sustainability and giving back to the harvesting community, making sure people get a fair price, that's exactly what our mission is too. You know, we're not just looking for new customers, but we're looking for customers who are aligned with our values and mission, um, which is fair trade, directly sourced, sustainable frankincense and myrrh. It's, it's coming out, like it's a lot more prevalent in the industry than it ever was before. I mean, consumers are looking for that now. We are working in an industry that's been around for thousands, if not tens of thousands of years and understanding that we have a tremendous opportunity to ensure that this becomes a legacy for everyone involved for it. And by a legacy, I mean that the trees thrive, that the communities thrive, and that we enjoy all the benefits that these natural products have to provide. I know I can make a difference there while making money here and helping people who are, you know, harvesting the trees to helping people heal, heal their bodies here is like a win-win. It's exciting for Scirocco to be involved in helping businesses to develop and looking at the needs in the Horn of Africa for jobs, for sustainable business, for uh, opportunities. If we go to business, we should be all be prosperous.